now this month marks 50 years since children were first transported to the wondrous world of Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Well, in just a moment, we'll be finding out what happened to two of the stars of the film. But just before that, Sam Rubin is joining us to discuss what made the movie so special. Uh, Sam, it's great to see you. So, I mean, loved by so many. Absolutely adored, revered by so many. And you know what? It, it still holds up. That's the most extraordinary thing. 50 years on, this is a movie we all show our children, we show our grandchildren. But initially, uh, Holly uh, and Philip, it was not a success. It was considered a box office failure, uh, taking in a little more than $4 million. So people were disappointed with the result of that. And also, of course, because the book was so revered, Roald Dahl controlled the screenplay. He didn't like the result of the movie, distanced himself from it. He didn't like Gene Wilder's performance, hard to believe, as great as the performance was. Uh, all told, when it initially came out, amazingly, the movie was not that well received. But it was funded by a cereal company. Indeed it was. Quaker Oats, of course, who make Quaker Oats, wanted, they owned the, the commercial rights to, they were planning to make a Wonka bar. You saw, of course, the candy bar in the clip. They never made that bar. They released a Wonka cereal, but they never came up with a candy bar. And that's why they called it Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. They wanted to come up with this, you know, push uh, to all things Wonka. They spent months and months in a lab trying to develop the perfect chocolate bar. They never got there. So the whole idea of, you know, reintroducing Willy Wonka to the world and most especially his delicious chocolates never came to chocolate fruition. And so um, when, uh, when the children met, uh, walked into that candy yard and that reaction was real? That reaction was real with a good reason, because almost a third of that set was entirely edible. And that chocolate river was actually a chocolate river. It was uh, milk and chocolate. And then uh, there's one sequence where Gene Wilder is singing and he actually bites into a cup at the end of the song. When he bites into that cup, that cup, unfortunately it was made of wax oh, really? but most everything else there's the yellow cup there yeah. that was a wax cup but most everything else on that set was edible including that extraordinary chocolate river i know that we'll come to that in a minute we're talking to the person that fell into it but um <laughs> it was to, later on there was obviously the tim burton remake and they used real things on set as well were there real squirrels on set you know what? Remember when Veruca Salt, and I just love that name, was uh, sort of uh, not attacked by squirrels, but I guess attacked by squirrels. <laughs> Tim Burton, as you know, is very method. They trained squirrels for months. There were 80 trained squirrels who uh, ultimately uh, were trained to go after Veruca, and they did. Uh, and this movie uh, actually had an initially better reception and far better box office. Obviously, the original uh, Willy Wonka the Chocolate Factory uh, became a hit with, as you mentioned, the digital remastering and all the television reruns. But the Tim Burton version with Johnny Depp, who sort of uh, in, embodied the weirdness, if nothing else, yeah. uh, was well received and also a big box office hit, making over $400 million ultimately. Well, thank you. Uh, and I think between... Part, pardon me? Uh, we're we're going to have to leave you, uh, Thanks, Sam, Sam, actually, with thank all the, the... Thank you for all the details there, because we've uh, sure. we've actually uh, got uh, two of the people who are in the movie, Michael Bolner, who played uh, one of the uh, Golden Ticket win winners, Augustus Gloop. And we're uh, also joined by Rusty Goff, who played the lead Oompa Loompa. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for being here. So, Rusty, I mean, when, when, you, when you landed the role, I mean, now we know it as the iconic movie that it is, but yes. back then, how did you feel about it? Well, I felt amazed because that was my first ever movie. Was it really? And I got a phone call from my friends. They said, we're going to Germany to do this film. I said, what about the audition? They said, there's no audition, you've got the job. Because there's not many little people in this country that can act. Mm. And in fact, there's not many, there's only like five, six of us. So they're putting Germans, they're putting a guy from Malta and a guy from uh, Iran into the places. But the sets were, to even when you were there, you see, you remember it vividly, they were Vivid, incredible. Vividly, yes. The sets were amazing. Uh, Harper Goff, the set designer, what a great guy he was, mm. to, des to design all this lot. Mm. And uh, I said, the Chocolate River, Yeah. it wasn't chocolate. It wasn't? No. Michael will tell you later. Oh, well, we'll ask him, we'll he ask him. There it. was one moment there, and it's that, that famous scene when Gene Wilder first makes his entrance into the movie, and he sort of comes in and sort of looks very old and fragile, and then the cape comes off and he sort of somersaults and lands in. And that was planned, wasn't it? And the kids didn't know that no. he was going to do that. No one knew. Gene wanted to do that. And he spoke to the director, Mel Stewart, about this. He said, I want to do this entrance. So they come down the step. Like, for, to make people think, is he real? 
It's as true. And it's course, as they true. question that throughout the entire movie, yes. then. It's, uh, there it is. Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so it's brilliant. a fantastic moment. And also, I mean, because Mel Stewart, who was the, um, the d director, was a perfectionist. Um, and in the Wonka um, room, uh, the, uh, the, the vision room, did you, you had to cartwheel, didn't you? I did the cartwheel, yes. yes. How many times did you make your cartwheel? 76. <laughs> oh, really? 76, yes. As you said just now, Mel was a perfectionist. So you've got Oompa Loompas around me doing this intricate dance routine, yeah. catching one another, and also turning their head towards camera to do lip sync. Oompa Loompa. Yeah. And then I'm doing the cartwheels. So, so one Oompa Loompa couldn't say Oompa Loompa, missed it, dropped him on the floor. Cut! If you do back it, to the top, again. do it again. Off you go. 76 takes. <laughs> it was worth it. It was worth it. Was you on Midsummer Murders. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> and they crazy. used the 76 takes. Did they use the last Did ones? they really? They always do. Right, let's speak to Michael now. Good ah, morning Michael. to you. So you you took on the iconic role of Augustus Gloop back then. I mean, you were a young, young boy at the time. Did you realise what a big deal this was going to be? No, not at all. I just uh, went down to make this movie spent there for a few weeks, and um, I didn't know what was really going on. I thought this is uh, just a movie and it will fade away very soon. And here we are 50 years later and you're still talking about it. You're a tax lawyer now in, uh, in, in Germany, but back to, those, uh, back to those days. And you say that at that time, you wished you'd been able to get a little closer to it, but because you were young, your English wasn't good enough to get you close to Gene Wilder. Yes, it was a poor thing. Uh, Gene Wilder was really nice to me and I tried to do some conversation with him, but it was very limited. Mm, and so, obviously, the, the, the scene, and we've mentioned it a couple of times here, the moment that he falls into the chocolate river, um, it wasn't made of chocolate. What was it then? Was it cold? No, it was cold water. It was old water. It was terrible stinking water because it was there for many weeks. And it was very swallow, just 10 centimetres deep, only a little space, about a square metre, where I had to jump in. And this was really dangerous to hit the square metre because the water was not uh, clear. Oh, yes, you had to get it just right. Wow. And so, uh, so now, now, when you... Uh, because you do get together, um, and um, I think most of the cast are still with us. Yes. Um, we, um, we, you say that you love, even now, getting close to the fans and meeting up at conventions and that kind of thing. Yes, that's really fun and that's really some kind of strange because it's a different world for me. I'm usually, usually doing taxes, but uh, having fans and be so famous in UK and US, USA, that's really great, it's well, fantastic. You still sound exactly like him, I've got to say. Um, it's so, uh, so lovely to, uh, to talk to you, Michael. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Thank you. And, um, Thank you. And, and as far as you're concerned, I mean, there, there, there are those conventions which hopefully you can get back together again. They People are wonderful. can celebrate this. It's though. the fans which make these movies, and we love the fans. Yeah. They come and ask questions, we tell them the answers, and some people know more about the movie than you do. <laughs> it's crazy. And, of course, funny. it gets passed on to generations to generations. It does. And I mean, it's a great film. Yeah, well, I've been to a convention where there's been three generations yeah. come up to speak to me. Uh, the fa grandfather, the father and the son. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you both. Thank you.